I've always been an artist, I want to say, uh, working with my mother, who's a painter. I got exposed to different art forms, such as photography and painting, very early on. However, my focus in school was government work. I was a city administrator, I was a court administrator, and I took a position that brought me out here to Renville, and I very quickly discovered that Minnesota is incredibly supportive to the arts. So I dove back into my art here more in Minnesota and started writing grants for projects that tied history and legacy together with uh, art within a community. And it just keeps rolling. It, it's just exciting and I get to do murals and I get to do photography projects. And I think that's kind of how it started here in Minnesota. I got to do the same act of tying a community's history to their modern day residents with the project Prohibited Acts, which I did in Granite Falls this past summer. Prohibited Acts was about taking actions and circumstances that were considered taboo 100 years ago in the Prohibition era and making them come to life in modern day uh, Granite Falls. Maybe laugh at them, see what's changed, but also see maybe what hasn't changed. That was a really exciting project, and we did everything from host community talks, where people got to share taboo stories from different decades, to we finished it with interactive sets all around town on Volstead days, where people could go and actually be a part of a speakeasy see live music, eat Cracker Jacks, which was a staple snack a hundred years ago. This is my studio space. Uh, I call it Studio Bergy. It's inside the beautiful KK Bergy building where there are monthly art exhibits and an art-based gift shop. I rent a small space in here and I use it for a photography studio and a painting studio, but it's also a co-working space. And uh, so it's really, it's something I'm trying to make accessible to every artist in Granite Falls who needs a space to practice. Olivia, Minnesota became a Main Street community this past year, I believe. And as part of becoming a Main Street community, they were able to put together a program called Artist on Main Street. And what that program did is it took proposals from local artists. It could be anything that created a sense of space and community or a public art in Olivia. They were really looking for placemaking efforts to revive their downtown community. I was very fortunate to be able to write five proposals for the city of Olivia and have five proposals accepted for the city of Olivia. I was excited to do this mural on the front of the Chamber of Commerce that has kind of an abstract corn pattern. I'm honoring the corn capital, of course, but also I was able to put my artistic flair on it and the chamber was very open to uh, just kind of letting me loose with it, along with another artist named Adam Price, who's incredibly talented. Well, yellow is my favorite color. It's hard to hide. Also in Olivia, Minnesota, I was able to do ground art in a park. There, uh, There's this concrete park that they call Dowling Square after Michael Dowling, the famed Yellowstone Trail champion. So we wrote a proposal for that square to put interactive art on the ground that kids can play with, adults can play with in the summer. Nice. <laughs> I love Granite Falls. My, my heart's in Granite Falls, I feel. Um, something about Granite Falls has always drawn me here. I don't know if it's the aesthetic of the river or the people in this community that are so supportive to the arts as well. I, I just, I felt like I'm, I was home the second I came here. I think as a community artist, it's really important to truly be connected to the communities that you're working with them. You can't truly represent a community and support a community unless you're ingrained in that community. You have to be able to sit down at coffee 
and talk with someone about the town and know about the town and take that time to create that space. You can't just say, show up and say, hey, I'm here because someone hired me to be here. So I, uh, I'm not hired to be in Granite. I'm here because my heart is here and the community supports me in a way that I, I've honestly never seen a community support their artist in any way like they do here. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram, online at 967cram.com.